Hi, good evening. So for my topic for our final video project on a subject that is very controversial on for or against, um, I chose to go with feminism. Being that I am a woman with at least a minor education, I kind of have a subjective obligation to have an opinion on the matter. So in my case, I am always been for um, I was raised in a matriarch household, raised by my grandmother and at least five aunts, uh, also five uncles and my parents, but mostly women. And we've always been raised to never depend upon a man, to always, you know, the sky's the limit. As long as you work hard, you could always reach your goals. There should be no limits whatsoever. No such thing as, you know, male dominated anything. If anything, women run everything. So that is pretty much how I've been raised so far. So according to the dictionary, feminism is defined as the advocacy for women's rights on the grounds of political, social, and economic equality to men. Traditionally, women have been considered inferior to men, both physically and mentally. Restricted by the use of law and doctrine, women could not possess property, conduct any business, or even control, have any control over their children. One of the first known documents standing up for women's rights came from Mary Wollstonecraft's vindic Vindication of the Rights of Women during the French Revolution in 1792. This writing was in response to those who thought that women should not be allowed to have an education. Although ambiguous in her writings about e real equality for men and women, this set a new set series in motion for centuries to come. By 1848, the Declaration of Sentiments was created by Lucretia Mott and Elizabeth Cady Stanton in the first Women's Rights Convention in Seneca Falls, New York. This movement was famously known as the women's suffrage and also the first wave feminism. It was a declaration demanded that women have equal rights in regards to education and property, voting and other issues. Their boldest claims that struck a chord with all was that all men and women are created equal. By 1920, women were granted the 19th Amendment to be able to vote without any discrimination. This, being one of the biggest feats, granted women access to no longer accept the things that they could not change, but to now actively take part in the change and the things that they could. So moving a little bit further into the future, um, after World War II, there was a baby boom and the women were no longer needed to help out during the war, but they were needed at home to cook, clean, take care of the children, go back to the way things were before the war. Now that we know from class that you can't unknow something once you know it, they've experienced the world and they want more. So by the 1960s, this stirred up the second wave feminism movement, also known as the Women's Lib Movement. Um, this was an era that expanded their demands um, other than property and voting to things like um, reproductive rights, workplace, sexuality, family, domestic violence, marital rape, and other issues with something called the Equal Rights Amendment. Um, in the 1990s, there was also a third wave that expanded things to all women of every culture and sexual orientation. Um, it's not just white women, it's not just straight women, everybody. So now that I've given you like pretty much a full history on everything that is feminism, um, what about the facts that I found out against? Well, one of the first things that I ran into was actually a um, article written by Gregory Jans. Um, it was a doctor who actually did a... He studied the brains um, of the different genders, and he actually um, found differences between actual physical differences between male and female brains. Um, the showed chemical, structural, and brain activity were different in both genders. Uh, for instance, uh, like women were better at multitasking, where men were more singly oriented. Um, it was pretty interesting um, actually seeing that we literally are physically different even in the mind which is you know the person in general. The next article that I ran into was actually um, about the victimization of males uh, by women. So there was actually a research uh, project done in the University of Missouri and amongst uh, high schools and colleges across the country. Um, surprisingly a large amount of data uh, suggesting that there's actually events and crimes against men um, by the use of verbal and physical peer pressure force against men to do sexual acts with women 
uh, against our will. Um, I'm pretty sure if this is happening to females, there would be a huge outrage, but because it's a man, they're expected to man up. And I don't think that's right. Next anti-feminist I ran into is named Milo Yanopoulos. And he was in a debate in February at the University of Michigan over, you know, the wage gap. Um, it's commonly known that women get paid less than men. Um, he actually did a great job breaking it down. Um, if it's broken down properly, it's actually in favor for women, especially if you're under the age of 30 and because of lifestyle choices later in life. Um, his main point that I took away though, and I was surprised by, was uh, women. when women have more options available to them, they almost never take the higher paying jobs because it in involves more work. Um, so it's mainly because of lifestyle choices, not because of unequal opportunity that they get paid less. My favorite anti-feminist that I ran into so far is actually a woman anti-feminist named Karen Strowan. Um, she has a YouTube called Girl Says What, and the video that I used for my paper uh, was called Feminism and the Disposable Male. And it was actually um, talking about the expectations of society to always place women and children first, and why is that? Um, like, they're second-class citizens, like they're not worth anything, they're just disposable, you can get another one. Um, I thought that was really interesting because it's just always expected, and I never thought about that before. Um, she also talks about the natural tendencies for society um, in even parents and raising their children that boys are just taught to suck it up and girls are just help more readily. So I just thought um, it just it really made me rethink um, my attitudes towards, you know, chivalry. Like, you know, why why does a woman and child have to go first? Is it just because of the female things? I mean, if we're supposed to be equal, should we not be giving preference to anybody? Another article that I ran into for an online newspaper was actually uh, Women Against Feminism. And basically they're just kind of against the whole third wave that happened in the 90s. That's the one that, you know, gave feminists the bad name. Um, basically what they want is they want equality, but they don't want the label that comes with it. Um, if you want equal, then you don't place a label on something because that makes it different from the other. And that's not what they want. One of the saddest things that I ran into was actually a website um, that was actually the National Center for Men, and it's actually a website for um, parental right, men's rights uh, counseling for divorced um, paternity tests for false accusations, things like that. Um, a lot of the times, um, almost all of the time, the children are always awarded to the mother, and the man almost has no say in the situation. I think that's not right, and there, there really should be some work done there. I, I think it should be the better parent, not the better gender. So basically after everything I've learned, um, if I had to say that I still hold true to my original stance, um, I'd say pretty much so. I would definitely say it's modified though a little bit. Um, after learning the other side, I found it really interesting and actually kind of swung me a little bit in the other direction. Um, it seems like we need to work a little bit more on the men's rights um, as far as more womanly rights go, if that makes sense. Um, like especially like with the paternal rights, um, domestic violence is actually... Uh, more women against men, you know, things like that. So it seems that we actually need to help out the men a little bit more and the women are just kind of picking and choosing what they're being discriminated against and sweeping everything else under the carpet. So I feel like we need to do a better job at exposing the injustices against all genders, all classes um, in the world. And I mean, it's, it is what it is in the world today, but um, I think we'd be better for it. I'd like to thank you for your time to spend with me. Um, I felt that you really couldn't talk about the other issues without actually getting through the history part of it. You know, um, you need to have a well-rounded uh, view in order to form an opinion. So um, I will cite all my sources in the description below. And I hope you guys have a great semester and I'll talk to you later. Bye.